somewhere around here. Let me take a look. Oh, it should be right up ahead. Think about it. The prophecy didn't say anything about what the lantern utmost joy actually looks like, right? Maybe we've overlooked something? Traveler, are you trying to figure out something else from the paper? of the pointy-eared cat, and a pious puppy will open the doors to show you the way. Huh. Paimon read the whole thing out loud, but nothing's happening. <gasps> look! Look! The wind is blowing! What a strong wind current. Oh, let's ride it up and see where it leads us. Huh? We'll have to fly up there? Uh, can someone carry me with them? Here. To be safe, I've been jotting down our entire route here. This way, no one will get lost. Oh, good thinking, Kale! Huh? Who would have thought we'd find this kind of table here? Weird. It's almost as if someone was holding a tea party. I never would have guessed that such a place could exist. Right above Mondstadt, too. Pretty lantern on the table. There's even a chair for each side of the lantern, too. There seems to be something on the back of this chair. Let me have a closer look. Take your seat, present your answers, and you shall reach enlightenment. Well, as far as instructions go, I guess that's simple enough. So we just need to do as it says, right? Wait a second. Huh? What is it, Albedo? We'd better make sure this place is safe before taking our seats. Everyone, please stay clear for a moment. Well, all our questions and doubts aside, 
the scenery here is pretty amazing. It'd be impossible to feel stressed here. How is everything, Albedo? Hmm... Everything seems to be fine. I didn't find any traps or suspicious mechanisms. But I also couldn't find any overt destructive devices. Huh? What do you mean? Well, it seems that wrong answers won't have any catastrophic consequences. Looks like we'll have to sit on these chairs and fulfill the prophecy. Everyone, I would like to suggest that we try some risky answers on our first attempt. Let's reserve our most confident answers for the second round. That sounds kind of smart. But why? Ah, uh, I get what he means. If we do as he says, then we may be able to figure out how the puzzle works. I see! That makes a lot of sense. <sighs> Mona, is there something wrong? You're not looking too good. Oh, are you hungry? I brought some snacks. Thank you for offering, Clee, but that's not quite it. While Albedo was checking just now, I gave my scryglass a spin, hoping to find some information. But there's a strange aura to this place. It's almost as if someone has been staring at me as soon as we stepped foot in here. But if nothing here has actually been physically tampered with, then... No. Could that person be... What do you mean, Mona? Who could it be? Uh, never mind. It's not like I've got any proof. Ugh, don't leave us on the edge like this, Mona. Hmm. I'll just do what Albedo said. Yes. Well, let's test the hypothesis together, Klee. Right. Okay, then I'll answer the first question. If someone were to ask me to find a flower that is not of this world... You can do it, Sucrose! Um... Then I would fetch a tetratanic sweet flower. All right, I'm up next. My part of the prophecy is to find a guide who will never get lost. Kole, I hope you found your answer. <sighs> My answer is that I will be that guide. For a long time, I have been guided by others. It's taken me a while, but I finally made it to where I am today. Although I still haven't made a name for myself, and I'm still quite immature, I... I would still like to put my name forward. Because I would like to become a guide that can help others. I want to help others the same way Amber, Master Tainari, Sino, and everyone else helped me. Now it's my turn to pass on the gift that I've been given. All right, it's up to me to answer the third part. I, I, I'll submit myself as one who would never lie. 
Although I've never really had any other virtues or talents, I'm confident that I've always been an honest person. I, I'd like to thank everyone, too, for giving me this opportunity to validate myself. And last but not least, I will answer the final part of the prophecy. There's no tale more befitting the title of a legend that never ends than our fates as human beings. Wait! The lantern just lit up! Whoa! All four sides of the lantern are glowing! Huh? But... Kale, could I ask you to stand up for a second? Oh, uh, all right. Hmm. Correctly? It's pretty clear now, isn't it? We've just proven that there is no right answer for this prophecy. No right answer? But how could that be? Although the instructions had come from an old and enigmatic prophecy, it is in fact nothing like the ancient mechanism that we had all imagined it to be. I believe the lantern only serves as a simple signal. Ah, and to think, I never expected you to actually find this place. What? There's someone else here? We meet again, traveler. You're that outlander we met the other day at Good Hunter! It's all thanks to you that I was able to find this place. Good thing that you were too preoccupied with the prophecy to notice someone tailing you from the shadows. Oh, is that so? Then, why do I spy yet another person following in your shadow? Wait, really? <sighs> There's no need for pleasantries. You should know I'm here for you. Is it just because I'm a visitor from abroad? I was there when you snuck your way into Marjorie's place. Huh. So you had your eyes on me even then, huh? That was two whole weeks ago, you know. It's hard not to notice you when I'm on duty every day. All right. In that case, I'll admit it. I was the person who slipped this prophecy into the storybook. Huh? But why? Then, does that mean this wasn't a real prophecy after all? Don't worry. Even though you probably have plenty of reservations about me, you can be sure that the prophecy is genuine. In fact, many of you here today may have heard the code name of the one who left the prophecy to me. She hailed from an ancient assembly of powerful women, each of whom used a single letter to signify themselves. Who would have guessed? It seems that power was indeed left behind by the old hag after all. Ah, so you're B student. It's an honor to meet you. I am Scarlet, the successor of Jay. Well, what are you talking about? It's 
It's a long story, but I'm not quite sure that I'm the best person to tell it. Since you've all spent so much time and energy trying to decipher this prophecy, you must also be very interested in the secret behind this lantern, no? The lantern has already been lit. Now then, please allow me to disturb your happy peace. Huh. Why did this little thing just light up? How strange. Hello? On the other side of the lantern. Can you hear me over there? Mom? Hmm. Oh, I hear many youthful voices. Madam, I am Scarlet, the successor of Jay. Oh, <clears throat> Since we've last gathered, Jay's successor has already become so reckless and bold. Unbelievable. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you talking just like the old hag? <sighs> old hag? Who would dare say that? Is that Mona? Who are you? Who dares imitate my master? <clears throat> hmm. And what of imitation and mimicry? It has always been a fool's errand to mimic and learn from humanity. Oh, it's Alice. I'm here too. Mom, why are you trying to talk like other people? Ah, uh, <laughs> so I see everyone's here. Well then, my warmest greetings, everyone. Miss Alice, why would you... Well, it's been many years since this lantern last lit up. You can't blame me for thinking that one of the old friends from my youth may have decided to catch up again. Ah, why does she sound so coy all of a sudden? And if I recall correctly, we left this lantern in the care of the animal Archon Barbados. Hmm. You must be commended for uncovering an artifact and trusting to the god of wind himself. Tell me, are you sitting around my beloved tea party table? It's a really long table. Oh, so you are. I suppose this means even the Animal Archon has granted you entry to this place. Was all of this Scarlet's doing? Wait, wait. Paimon's completely lost now. So what was this assembly you were talking about earlier? Oh, Miss Alice, would it be alright to leave the explanation of that to you? <laughs> well, you should be rewarded for making it all the way up here and activating the lantern. Now then, let me tell you a long and ancient story. Ever heard of the Hexen Circle? As the spooky name suggests, it's a secret society. Once upon a time, it even challenged the animal Archon himself. But he replied, let us make music, not war, and resolve our conflicts through song. From then on, the mages would only ever convene in the woods, in the skies, or on the edges of cliffs. At these tea parties, they discussed their stories and secrets and resolved their differences, as the tea and cakes bore witness to their pledge never to fight amongst themselves. Yesterday, I snuffed out the life of my beloved. He had grown old and was extremely sick. He loved me dearly, so I took his fate in my hands and ended his pain. I'm raising a son. Of all the children I had, he's the only one left. <laughs> but I suppose that still makes me a mother. My lifespan is nothing compared to yours, so I wish to leave you with my storybook. Actually, maybe you can pass it on to your children one day. Oh, this looks interesting. Let me scry. 
My dear sisters, we mustn't let prophecies threaten our bonds of friendship. Even the most frightening witch was once a little girl, and growing up can be so tough. Sometimes we all need to vent our troubles to the wind. Even if the nations go to war, or the sky falls down, the mages' tea parties shall forever be held around this table. That's right. We often met here to chat and have tea. Th then what about the part saying that if we light the lantern of utmost joy, we'd receive a supreme blessing? Oh, about that. <laughs> I never expected anyone other than Jay to actually read the full contents of that prophecy. It's a little embarrassing. The truth is, that prophecy was actually just a letter that we sent to Jay as a group the day before her wedding. <laughs> hmm. So it was indeed written by all of you. <laughs> I must thank you for resisting the urge to immediately reveal the truth to everybody, Albedo. Knowing you, you probably figured out everything the moment you laid eyes on the message. No, it took me a little longer than that. A flower that is not of this world, a guide who will never get lost, one who would never lie, and a legend that never ends. These four descriptions signify four individual mages. When a member of the organization had to leave the group to spend the rest of her days with her beloved, the other mages would write down this prophecy and send it to her to invite her for a final get-together. A flower that is not of this world signifies, of course, flowers that do not naturally exist in this world. This is the signature of R, full name Rhindaughter, also known as Gold. If there's anyone in this world who could create a flower species that does not yet exist, it would be her. The guide who will never get lost is N, otherwise known as Nicole. You may not have encountered her yet, but she is a truly extraordinary woman who has made this world's direction and order her subject of study. Some of you may be fortunate enough to have already heard her voice. Like a prophetess, she will only speak to guide people toward the truth when a change has occurred in the world. She has a tendency to suddenly speak in someone's mind without any warning. <laughs> If one day you would be unfortunate enough to run into a truly dangerous situation, she may use her voice to guide the way forward for you. <sighs> Who would have guessed that there are so many mysterious women in this world and that they would all know each other? The one who would never lie is... me. I hope no one would take offense. It's just that I, Alice, or A for short, have always had a soft spot for those with sincerity and candor. As for a legend that never ends, you may not know M in person, but you've likely encountered one of her works. Have any of you ever read The Boar Princess? Huh? I'm pretty sure every child in Mondstadt has read that book. <laughs> it's also one of my favorite stories. M was an exceptional human writer who used her prose to teach me the meaning of grief. Don't you think such a person would deserve a seat at the mage's table? Paimon's getting more and more lost. 
It may sound hard to believe, but I can attest to everything that Alice has said. Jay was also a mortal who aged and passed on, leaving her title to her students and followers. Alice, you've never acknowledged any of Jay's successors. It's now been centuries since the first of us took on her mantle. I've always wanted to meet you. Do you also want to become a mage? Title aside, I think I'm more interested in the meaning and purpose of the Hexen Circle. I used to think that the Hexen Circle was a group of women who could control the very fate of this world. But now, I've seen for myself that besides Jay, many other ordinary people were also among you. Do you think less of us now? No, not at all. My interest has been piqued, and I'm now even more drawn towards the idea of becoming a mage. You're right. I've never acknowledged any of Jay's successors. But you are different. You are much more fascinating than any of your predecessors. Oh, has someone finally piqued Aunt Alice's interest? Now is not a good time, Scarlet, but as soon as I am able, I will seek you out for a meeting. I want you to tell me all about Jay's married life back in her hometown. So the mage who received the prophecy letter from all of you was Jay? She left the Hexen Circle after getting married? Precisely. There was only one way the letter could have been interpreted. She would have known what we meant as soon as she saw the message. We were just asking one thing of her. Please come to see us again, before you go and settle forever with your happiness. Please come share some of it with your best friends and sisters. So, the Supreme Blessing actually meant... All journeys are fleeting and will eventually come to an end. What will give us the most fulfillment and happiness in the end are those who will greet us at our journey's destination. Dear child, I believe you can also understand what I am talking about. We women will always have many troubles and encounter pains and frustrations that will keep us up at night. But no matter how hard things may become, we will cross mountains and oceans to see our best friends again, regardless of how many years have passed or how far the distance may be. As long as we can be with our beloved friends, our hearts will be filled with joy. To us mages, that's what being supremely blessed is all about. Oh. Uh, I still don't get it, but I do know that all the mages are Mom's best friends. <laughs> if you ask how I see it, the Hexen Circle is just a group of ladies that I spent my youth with. Anyway, I'll introduce some of the other members to you all later. I still have a few things to attend to, so this will have to do for today. Bye, Mom! Todoko says bye, too! Goodbye, darling, and farewell to all of our other friends as well. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Oh, now that I think of it, isn't it getting close to 
that time of year? Yes, it's Windbloom again, Alice. It's also a special anniversary date. I'm sure you still remember. Yes, I do remember now. It was on this day many, many years ago that Jay tied the knot. Oh, just in time for the Festival of Love and Freedom. Everyone, please enjoy this year's Windbloom Festival to the fullest. Why didn't you tell me we'd have to glide all the way back down? 